During the last video in this series, uh, we're going to focus on this learning objective. Uh, we're going to look at linking bonding and structure of ionic compounds to explain their physical properties. In particular, we're going to look at melting boiling points, electrical, uh, electrical conductivity, but we'll also focus on a couple other physical properties as well. So this is the science understanding that we need to cover during this uh, video. The properties of ionic compounds can be explained using the model for ionic bonding. And these are the things we need to explain. We're going to look at uh, four main uh, physical properties. Uh, so we generally classify ionic compounds as hard substances. They are brittle, they have high melting and boiling points. And then in terms of conductivity, this can happen in a range of ways. So they do not conduct electricity as a solid, they do as a liquid, as well as being um, in aqueous solution or dissolved in water. If we talk about the first one, the hardness, uh, hardness has to do with the ability to try and resist change in motion or shape when we apply a force on that material. What we know is that ions in an ionic compound are arranged in an alternating fashion where each ion is surrounded by ions of opposite charge. So this sodium ion here is surrounded by oppositely charged chloride ions. And this is in this plane here, but then also in front and behind it, you would get oppositely charged ions surrounding that sodium. And the same thing would occur for the chloride ions. So around each chloride ion, you have surrounding it oppositely charged sodium ions. So we have strong extensive ionic bonds that uh, make these ionic compounds very hard substances. So they will somewhat resist changes in shape or motion when we apply a force. What can happen, however, is when we do apply a force, uh, we notice that we can actually shatter um, ionic compounds. So salt's a good example. What we can do is we can apply a force and we can easily turn salt crystals, like rock salt, into smaller powdered form. So we would say that salt is brittle and brittleness is about the ability of a material to shatter. So this isn't the same as deforming or changing shape. And this occurs when we apply some type of force. If we have a look at the diagram, what we notice is got our hammer here so imagine we're bashing away at some sodium chloride and as we bash away what we do is we cause like charge ions to align and we know that like charges repel so when this happens it causes the ionic compound to shatter and to break apart into smaller and smaller crystalline uh, structures so the repulsion is what causes that shattering Going into the key properties, so melting points and boiling points firstly, what we know is that ionic compounds do have this strong extensive ionic bonding that exists between all of the ions in a lattice structure. So this repeating network of ions uh, after ions. And because of that strong extensive bonding, it means that you need large amounts of heat or thermal energy to try and break apart and separate the ions from one another. So we often need to heat these to high temperatures to try and cause them to melt. We would rarely see ionic compounds reach their boiling point. The strength of ionic bonds can depend on uh, a number of factors. So usually it depends on the magnitude of the charge of the ions. So are they one positive, two, three positive, or likewise for negative? And the other thing has got to do with how close the, these ions can actually uh, bunch up from one another. And the closer they can, then the stronger these attractions will be. The last property we're going to look at is the electrical conductivity. So we had before that ionic compounds don't conduct as a solid. And we've explained this in a previous video on types of materials. But what we can see is that this is the regular structure of an ionic compound here. And what we have to know is that these ions are actually in fixed positions. So they're not allowed to move. If we were to apply um, a voltage across this ionic compound, the charge cannot actually flow from one end of the terminal to another. So it's impossible to try and pass this electric current 
through a solid ionic compound. This, however, changes when we've got either a molten or liquid or an aqueous solution of an ionic compound. Because what happens in this case, so if we were to melt it, the ions are now free to move, so they're mobile. That means that they are now able to carry that charge and pass that electric current, starting from this negative terminal, and they'll carry negative charge towards the positive terminal. Alternatively, the positively charged ions end up being attracted to this negative terminal here. But effectively, we end up with an ability for charge to flow in a circuit. In a, an aqueous solution, water molecules help break apart the ionic structure, the, the lattice structure of an ionic compound, and that allows the ions to free uh, themselves up so that they can then freely move throughout that solvent. And so this will work in exactly the same way as the uh, liquid or molten ionic compound. The uh, charges are now mobile, and so we can get this movement of charge being possible. This uh, diagram just helps support this idea of how ionic compounds uh, can conduct in aqueous solution. And we can show this by trying to conduct electricity of just some pure water. We can see that we can't actually get this light bulb to turn on. We've got a solid ionic compound here. We can see the ions are in fixed positions, so they're not moving. That means that we can't get that charge being passed from one end to another. So again, light bulb is uh, not turning on. But if we mix the two together, we turn it into an aqueous solution. It means that these ions are now free to roam and free to move around to pass that electric current. And when that occurs, we can get con uh, conduction occurring. So we know that ionic compounds can conduct electricity, but only when the ions are free to move around. That is the last video for uh, this uh, subtopic on 2.2 on ionic bonding. Uh, again, if uh, you can, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.